Alaska Airlines is now grounding its entire fleet of Boeing 737 9 MAX planes after a terrifying trip on Friday. Alaska Airlines Flight 1282 had just taken off from Portland, Oregon when a section of its cabin ripped off, leaving a gaping hole, as you see right there, in the jet with more than 170 passengers on board. One passenger captured the scene during the very tense but silent moments after the incident happened. They are all nearly paralyzed in fear there. Uh, the plane was only airborne for about 20 minutes before the pilot made an emergency landing back in Portland. One person was taken to the hospital with a minor injury. Another passenger describes the harrowing ordeal. I understand from talking to, to, to a lady who was sitting in, in the row immediately behind where the panel blew up that there was a, you could see later that there was a two window section panel that blew up. It's about as wide as a refrigerator and about two thirds as high. And she said uh, there was, I guess, a boy and his mother were sitting in that row, and his shirt was sucked off him and out of the plane, and his mother was holding onto him, onto him. And she said her own little boy's phone went out too. Incredible. Uh, CNN aviation correspondent Pete Montine is tracking all of the latest developments. Pete, I mean, what do we know about how this happened? This happened in a really explosive moment for Drika, like the most violent convertible ride you've ever been on. In this case, a Boeing 737 MAX 9 in row 26, where there could have been a door. This plane did not have it, known as a door plug. More on that in a second. This really happened in a bang. Seven minutes into the flight at 16,000 feet, this plane experienced what is technically known as a rapid decompression. The high pressure, breathable air inside goes rushing outside. The cold, thin air outside comes rushing inside. And you heard about that boy who had his shirt pulled off. The oxygen mask came down. The pilots had to deal with this very quickly. And I want you to listen to the calm from the new air traffic control recordings we just got. Step one, fly the airplane. Step two, run the checklist, descend back down to breathable air. You don't have a lot of consciousness time at 16,000 feet. And then communicate to air traffic control what is going on. Roger, descend and maintain 10, and when able, uh, give me the nature of the emergency and your intentions. Seattle, Alaska, 1282, just to touch out, we're declaring emergency, we need to descend down. Seattle, Alaska, 10,000. You can hear the pilots with their muffled voices. <laughs> Likely they had oxygen masks on too. The left side of the airplane's fuselage is where this failure occurred. There is a door that can be installed at the Boeing factory. It depends on the seating configuration ordered by the airline. This airplane in particular did not have it. Instead, it has a plug that you can see on the outside of the airplane there. You wouldn't know about it from the inside. This plane in particular rolled off the factory floor only 10 weeks ago from Renton, Washington. First flight, October 15th, 150 flights for Alaska Airlines since then. Boeing now under the microscope once again after a litany of issues with the 737 MAX. Two major crashes abroad, 346 people killed, grounded in the U.S. for 18 months, and Boeing has been dogged by quality control issues since. The good news here, mm -hmm. 171 passengers on board, six crew, all okay, and the crew did an exceptional job. Oh, they really did. I mean, that is great news, uh, great news there, but this is really rattling, you know, a lot of people. So any indications now that other airlines might ground their 737-9 MAX jets? This is the latest news? data uh, from Sierra which looks at the global airline fleet, and they say there are about 215 737 MAX 9s in use around the world. One of the biggest operators, United Airlines, they have 79 of them. We've reached out to comment to see what they will do, although we do know now that Alaska Airlines, all 65 of its planes, are temporarily grounded pending inspections of this specific spot. Uh, Alaska Airlines CEO says that will take only a few days time, although we will see what transpires here. The National Transportation Safety Board digging into this along with the Federal Aviation Administration. for Yeah, uh, and adding to the alarm, I mean, this is a young uh, aircraft. Uh, I mean, Pretty new. Just 10 weeks old.
Yeah. All right, Pete Montine, thank you so much. We'll check Anytime. back with you as you learn more. So let's talk uh, more about the analysis of this. Let's go to retired 777 Captain Les Aben. Uh, good to see you. So what's your reaction, your initial reaction to hear that a piece of a Boeing 737-9 MAX plane would simply, you know, fall off, get sucked away, and frighten a whole lot of people? Well, I'm flabbergasted from Greek. I, I, I just, uh, it's hard for me to imagine, regardless of the fact that Alaska uses that or does or does not utilize that particular uh, uh, section as a emergency exit. That was a service door. Pete uh, did a great job of uh, pretty much describing, um, you know, what that was all about. But the, at the end of the day, it's a plug type door is what we call it. It's like uh, like a bank vault. Um, that that door. Uh, if it was used as an emergency exit, should have sealed tight against that airplane. Um, it, how it came out mm -hmm. is just unfathomable to me. But in, in any case, uh, the crew did a tremendous job, as we, yeah. as uh, yeah. Pete and you just talked about. But the first thing you've got to do is take care of yourself up in the cockpit, and that's and and the very first thing it, uh, that we do is we put on our oxygen mask. Now they were only at sixteen thousand feet. So they had enough oxygen. It would have got a little uh, dicey had they been up there longer, but or been at a much higher altitude. That's the other part of it. It's good that it came off when it did. The uh, and then once you start with the oxygen mask, you start a checklist, like Pete said. Then you come down very quickly. However, one of the caveats of coming down is to is to say, well, should we come down fast? or do we have a possible structural integrity issue? And guess what? They probably thought they did. Got a call from flight attendants and say, hey, <laughs> the side of the fuselage has a big hole in it. Um, so they probably took a little more time than they would have. And when I looked at the flight aware um, data, it, it, they could have come down a lot faster, but I think they were they were using their best judgment and I, and I applaud them for that. Yeah. So in any case, uh, all the oxygen mass will automatically come down but it, it certainly was a, uh, a a very harrowing situation for the passengers back there, but the crew did tremendous. Uh, and, and we celebrate them, thank goodness. So uh, when it comes down to the analysis of the what happened, you mentioned a seal. Okay, this is a space where there's an option for it to be a door or the windows. Uh, in this case, you said, you know, it was a plug uh, door. So what kind of seal is traditionally around it? Might that be the area that's compromised? Because this isn't a new configuration. This is something uh, that is, you know, customary in, on a lot of planes. But something obviously went wrong. This is a 10-week-old uh, aircraft. Uh, what's the first order of business in trying to figure out how and why this was compromised? Well, if this was a plug type door that could have been used as an option as a service door, which would become an emergency exit, um, it, it, like I said, it's a bank vault type door situation. So having those, th th there's pins that surround that whole thing. The seal is just to uh, just in, in reinforce all of that. At, at, so having that door come open with a pressurized airplane it just, it's amazing to me. I don't know how uh, that could happen unless it wasn't constructed properly. And mm -hmm. if this door was functional in any particular way, the cockpit would have seen a message that said, hey, this door is open. Mm -hmm. And so it's wise in your view then that, you know, immediately these kinds of aircrafts, uh, you know, part of any fleet would be suspended, you know, grounded uh, while they carry out the investigation. The NTSB is sending a go team to Portland to investigate uh, from that standpoint. It, it, it's an extraordinary circumstance and I understand why they're doing it. Um, you know, we, let's not start talking about the history of the MAX. Now, this certainly isn't related to the to the uh, the MCAS system that we knew back, uh, you know, in 2019. But um, you know, like like Pete said, there are some quality control uh, aspects to this airplane, and uh, we're hoping that, uh, that that Boeing gets it right, or this is an anomaly. You know, this is a one-off um, a situation that could have been under human control that we're not aware of at this point. Is it an anomaly to have this kind of door option configuration? Is it, you know, specific to the 737-9 MAX planes, or do we need to be concerned about this same kind of option configuration on other aircrafts? We shouldn't be con concerned about the, the, this. Is, 
All airlines order their airplanes in different types of configurations when it comes to seating, when it comes to a, a cockpit arrangement. So, you know, this is not unusual from that standpoint. I guess Alaska decided, uh, you know, because they have enough emergency exits for an evacuation situation that they didn't necessarily have to utilize this door, so they utilized it for seating. Mm -hmm. All right, let's say, Ben, uh, thank you so much. And of course, we are all glad that all passengers, all crew are okay. Pretty shaken up probably, but okay.